Hi lovelies, I'm really excited to be back with another video and you know the drill, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do go ahead and do so and you will get notified when I upload my latest videos and I'm really really good with the uploading now and I'm trying to be more diligent about my content creation. So I'm glad you guys liked the last video and um, this one is a little bit different. Um, it's more about lifestyle, it's more about stuff that we need to talk about and um, especially um, the younger generation, especially women, we need to talk about this stuff and a lot of people are already talking about it so that's amazing. And um, I also wanted to share my thoughts on this one thing that I think a lot of us women struggle with and also overcome and also um, a triumph but at the same time it's something we all go through commonly so this one is about body confidence and confidence in general it's really important as a woman for us to grow up with the right kind of attitude towards our body image and towards our self-confidence because it is very much a make or break thing when it comes to how the rest of our life goes so um, this one I thought was um, important because of that so um, I'm gonna start with a little bit of history about my own body image struggles and my own experience with this growing up in Melbourne um, I kind of never realized what the concept of beauty was and I know it's weird because I come from a pageant background I um, I'm a Miss Sri Lanka for Miss World, you know, all of that is there. But at the same time, um, in my younger years, I think I used to get a lot of love, admiration, um, attention, but none of it had anything to do with how I looked. So um, I was, you know, really active in the Sri Lankan community in um, Australia, in Melbourne. I did a lot of voluntary work. I was a dancer. I was um, a radio personality. I worked on television. I did music videos um, and a lot of live um, events as a compeer. So, you know, a lot of the um, attention and love I got was because of what I was good at. And I grew up with the belief that that's what um, you know makes you special what you're good at what your capabilities are and who you are not what you look like so I think um, that was immensely helped by my upbringing as well my parents never talked about looks my family never talked about looks it was all about our accomplishments and um, what we're good at you know so um, having said that I first noticed this huge um, you know scrutiny around looks when I actually won Miss Sri Lanka. Um, it was then that a lot of people start scrutinizing how you look and um, you know kind of start to impart their own belief systems on you as if it's your job to be pleasing on the eye of other people. So let's get that crossed out straight away. Okay, your job on this planet is not to be pleasing on the eye of other people and to fit their standards of beauty. All right, so um, number one, you shouldn't have to do it. Number two, you can't possibly do it. Right, so um, keeping that in mind, I want to move forward to a lot of the criticism that I got around how I look. Um, you know, people had various opinions of what I should look like and they still probably do and I used to let a lot of those really resonate because I was young I was 22 23 and I used to let that really mean something to me and it was when I got older and grew more into my skin that I realized that um, I was just perfect the way I am and that had nothing to do with whether I was the prettiest girl in the room or the country or the world. It was a matter of really embracing who I am, right? And going to Miss World really helps put things into perspective as well. You are surrounded by 120 odd girls who look so very different from each other. You can't possibly compare, um, you know, somebody from, um, you know, Sierra Leone or Uganda to a beauty from Netherlands or India or Sri Lanka. It's just 
completely different standards of beauty and yet they're the most beautiful in their country right so how can you possibly compare these women and their beauty and and kind of scale them so that's why even in beauty pageants it has a lot more to do with who you are than what you look like so of course entering into the showbiz industry you do get bullied a lot about how you look not just me but everyone you get scrutinized you can't put on weight you can't um, change how you look you can't possibly have anything really uh, change about you people still compare how i look now to how i looked 11 12 years ago and expect me to look the same really <laughs> honestly that's like a thing that's something that people actually think is possible as if they don't have mirrors and as if they don't look at themselves from 12 years ago 10 years ago and compare and realize that they look nothing like what they used to look like either so having said that bollywood is one of the most scary places you can enter as a woman because that industry really 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 puts beauty in some really weird dimensions where you are supposed to fit this ideal that honestly not even the heroines who are on that screen can fit into in real life you know you're glammed up you're dolled up you're perfected for screen and us normal girls are supposed to live up to that it's simply not possible it's also really unhealthy and media on a daily basis does that right and that's not something that we have to subscribe to and that's something i really want you to understand if you don't subscribe to it you are not a victim of it you cannot be a victim of it right so with bollywood of course you hear everything everything from you need to get um, breast implants to you need to get yourself um, a, a thinner sharper nose to higher cheekbones or actually they love my cheekbones but you know just whatever they will tell you anything that um, they think is the formula to making it in the industry you need lighter skin um, dusky skin doesn't work anymore honestly today all of those beauty standards beauty ideals are changing and one thing you need to realize is that beauty ideals have been changing for ages throughout history if you look at the way women were thought to be beautiful a hundred years ago 200 years ago 500 years ago it is hugely different to what we idolize today and what we idolize today is based on so many different factors okay most of it is commercial commercial factors and if we try to keep up with the changing beauty standards it is never going to be realistically possible because yesterday Kate Moss with her stick thin figure was in it's trending it's what everybody wants and today you have Kim Kardashian who's completely polar opposite of a Kate Moss so what do we do do we go from this one day to this in six months because it's the right thing to do it's the in thing to do do we get butt lifts and and liposuction and all of that just to fit this current ideal no what do we do instead we embrace who we are the way we are and we realize that we are put on this earth to achieve a lot more than fit into beauty ideals you also have to understand that a lot of these beauty ideals are actually sort of um, focused around certain product placements so if kim kardashian is looking a certain way she will promote her waist trainers for example so it has nothing to do with real beauty it has nothing to do with um you know us being empowered by the way we look it's important to look good for us to feel good okay i'm not denying that but it has nothing to do with how successful we can be how accomplished we can be how content we can be in our lives simple as that all right another thing to really understand is that bodies are not meant to stay the same what you look like in what you look like and what your body was when you were 16 versus when you were 25 versus when you were 35 and 55 and 80 is meant to look different it's meant to be different okay this is my opinion people might have different views but what i believe 
is that as a woman especially and even as a man there is a journey there is a process that our body goes through in order to do what it's supposed to do so why is a six-year-old's body different to a 26 year old's body as a woman okay there's childbirth there's reproduction there's so many biological aspects involved in how our bodies change biologically over time okay so again even you yourself comparing you to a decade ago or two decades ago is unnecessary you are here you're blessed to be alive you are blessed to be aging it's not the easiest thing to accept guys even i struggle with aging sometimes because you're like oh my god i have so much to do and i haven't done any of it but at the same time i'm still grateful to be alive okay because so many people don't get to turn 30 or 40 or 50 and we do so that's a blessing okay and don't forget to be grateful on a daily basis for that even in buddhism we talk about impermanence and that is something that i've grown up with and even my mom my aunts they show me their hands and their skin and they show me pictures from their youth and they say look how we've aged right so just be aware that beauty is not a permanent thing so i love that i love that i got to grow up with that and i really want to draw our attention back into the inner beauty as opposed to the much idolized the much hyped outer beauty so much like happiness confidence is also an inside job okay i have learned to love so many women like maya angelo or um, oprah winfrey or michelle obama mother Teresa, princess diana um so many women who've who've honestly contributed to the betterment of this planet in even a tiny little teeny weeny way who are much more than how they look so a beautiful woman to me is who they are and that's not a cliche thing it really is about who they are have you noticed that the more you get to know somebody no matter what they look like the more you get to know somebody and the more you see their kindness and their generosity and their inner beauty you actually start to see more beauty in their outer appearance as well i've noticed that it happens to me all the time and i know you must have experienced it as well and just for fun here are some women who are going to make you forget about redefine and rethink beauty malala yusufzai sirimao bandar naika really google these women find out indira gandhi one of my favorite, one of my most inspiring, Maya Angelou. Oh my God, if you don't know her already, you should. Fire's Diary. One of the favorite books I've ever read. Amazing woman. Oprah. <laughs> don't you just love her? Oh, Frida Kahlo. Again, Google, research, find out. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. My goodness, redefined. It's a real thing. Your inner beauty does radiate outwards. So ultimately, it's really about owning who you are and not making apologies for it. All right. Another thing that I think we are so afraid to talk about and we should is the fact that nobody, and I mean nobody, is perfect. Okay. I'm not even going to go into what is perfect. Okay. Let's just put that aside. But nobody is. Do you remember how Aishwarya Rai looked when, you know, she was the most beautiful woman in the world or quoted as the most beautiful woman in the world? Do you remember? And do you know what she looks like now? She's a mother. She's a wife. She's aged. She's different. She's still beautiful, but she's different. She is no longer that woman from 20 years ago. So today's world is filled with false beauty ideals. Today's world is filled with everyone trying to look the same because it's the right thing to do. There is no appreciation for uniqueness anymore. Whatever happened to embracing your unique features? If you have a mole on your face like Cindy Crawford, embrace it. If you have a really thin body, embrace it. If you have curves, embrace it. If you have some jiggly bits, embrace it. Embrace all those parts of you that make you who you are and your body is a vessel to get you to accomplish a whole lot of things 
that you can accomplish on this planet Earth in the limited time that you have. It's just a vessel. It's a very temporary rented space. So the more we get attached to it, the more we define ourselves by how we look. We're wasting precious time. We're wasting precious energy that we can spend being more of ourselves. So guys, this is something I want to talk about because I get a lot of DMs from girls wanting to look like me, wanting to, um, you know, use the same filters, use the same hairdresser, use the same hair color. Um, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do this? It's a lot of wanting to be like, and it's a lot less wanting to develop a sense of self. I can tell you this now. I um, have had my fair share of um, beauty scrutiny like I said people still um, find fault with how I look they do they really do okay and um, people who used to think I was not that great looking turn around you know a few years later and are now saying oh my god you're so gorgeous you're so stunning so that in itself I'm like oh my god so even those people change their minds so if you are trying to adhere to every single person's point of view their perception of what you should look like what beauty is there's no end to it so this is something i wish i'd known 10 years ago it would have saved me countless hours and days just being miserable and sad and depressed and crying over something one person may have said so um I'm not gonna lie to you guys it still affects me when people say negative things about me um, and how I look even today but I shake it off a lot faster than I did 10 years ago and um, I'm really really glad that I've come to realize and come to understand that we are a lot more than what we look like and that beauty doesn't define who we are and a perfect example of this that solidified this um, belief for me is um, a woman called Turia Pitt. Um, she's the wife of an Australian cricketer and she was a model and a beautiful young woman when she met with a tragic accident um, in a bushfire where she was um, quite badly burnt. And um, basically she did not look anything like uh, what she looked like before and to go from being a model um, to um, just a woman who was now you know recognized by what happened to her she went on to be one of the most inspirational women and um, went on to get married to her then boyfriend and um, have children and just have a beautiful life and a beautiful family and um, it also reminds us it also instills in us the faith that we should have in true love. Somebody who really loves you will love you for your soul, for who you are, not what you look like. And that's why their love has lasted. That's why they're so happy. And um, I think that was, again, one of the things that really uh, made me believe that um, we can have an identity that um, goes beyond what we look like. So um, guys, that's it for today. I'm so glad we had this chat. I think it was much needed. Um, do leave your comments below. I love hearing from you guys. And um, till the next one, stay safe and stay blessed. Much love.